Good morning, my name is Lydie van der Berg. I'm the Children's Ministry Director at the Willows Church. Now this past weekend we spent in George, which is the, the place of birth of my husband. In the service we attended, uh, we were reminded of the importance of thinking about the Word of God day and night. And the pastor was actually quite funny when he said that there are only two times to meditate on God's Word, day and night. The CEV uh, version of the Bible, the contemporary English version of the Bible, translates Psalm 1 uh, verses 2 and 3 as follows. God blesses all people who, who refuse evil advice and won't follow sinners or join in sneering at God. Instead, they find happiness in the teaching of the Lord and they think about it day and night. They are like trees growing beside a stream, trees that produce fruit in season and always have leaves. Those people succeed in everything they do. Isn't that what we're all looking for? Happiness and being fruitful and success? Well, Graham shared with us about contentment on Wednesday and how we shouldn't be content because of certain situations but find contentment in every situation. And that happiness or contentment is only found in God and in his word. And we all know this, but there are days we just don't believe it. There are those days when we feel like we're losing our faith. Is it really worth it to live this life as a Christian? Does it really make a difference whether I obey God or not? Am I actually bearing fruit and having an impact in the lives of those around me? Now, in our life group meeting last night, we listened to a teaching of Bruce Wilkinson, and I would like to share with you the insight he gave us on how to strengthen our faith. And this particular session is part of a series called The Testing of Your Faith. And throughout the sessions, we have been looking at the people of Israel and how God tested their faith time and time again. Psalm 78 refers back to the Israelites and talks about how they just didn't learn the lesson that God could be trusted and that he would take care of them and provide for them. I, re I will read um, part of the psalm um, starting from verse 7. Then they would trust God and obey his teachings without forgetting anything God had done. They would be different from their ancestors who were stubborn, rebellious and unfaithful to God. And then verses 10 and 11, they broke their agreement with God and they turned their backs on his teaching and they forgot all he had done, even the mighty miracles. Now, what we see in verse 7 is that there are three things that you should do when you feel like you're, you are losing your faith. Firstly, trust God, or as other translations say, set your hope in God. And, and this speaks about the future. And then secondly, don't forget anything God has done. This speaks about the past. And thirdly, obey his teachings. This speaks about the present. When our faith starts to weaken, we need to look at the past, the present and the future to restore our faith. The faith of the Israelites was tested many times and as soon as they started to lose their faith, they started to complain and they became all negative. It's the same with us. A clear sign of someone losing their faith is when they start to complain about their situation. Someone who complains and is negative doesn't show faith in God. When the people of Israel found themselves in a difficult situation, did they actually look back and remember what God had done before? When they found themselves hungry and thirsty in the desert, did they remember that God had saved them from slavery? No, because we read they started to complain. Were they thinking of God's promises of being with them and leading them and providing for them? No, because they were grumbling and putting the blame on Moses for taking them to that terrible place. Wilkinson makes a very thought-provoking statement. 
you use your faith in the present. To restore your faith, you look at the past and future. Look at the past by remembering how God came through for us during previous tests. And if you've been following Jesus for a long time, you will have many memories of what God has done in your life. When you think about those things, your faith is being strengthened. His faithfulness will fill your faith. Look at the future by thinking of the many promises God has given in his word. And you then claim those promises for your present situation and you find your faith is stronger. Look at the present by standing on the memories and the promises that you have. You are able to commit to trusting God when your faith is strong. You cannot trust God just by being determined to have faith. Determination comes from faith and it does not cause faith. Remember the tree in Psalm 1. It is not trying hard to bear fruit, doing its utmost to squeeze the fruit out. No, the tree is bearing fruit by itself. How? Because it's planted by the stream. The psalmist gives that picture to describe how a believer can bear fruit, not by being determined or trying, but by being rooted in God's word. And the same is true for having faith. Trying hard to have faith will not work. You must know the word of God so you know his promises. You must walk with him every day in order for you to see how he has been working in your life in the past. Wilkinson paints a very nice picture of how we can see the past, present and the future in the Bible. In the Old Testament, we see the past in the first 17 books. Those books describe the people of Israel and all that happened to them. We see the future in the last 17 books, where we find the books with prophecies. Which books deal with the present? All the books in the middle, books like the Psalms and Proverbs. In the New Testament, we see the past in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John and the book of Acts. They deal with all that happened when Jesus came and lived on earth and then how the church came into being. The future is described in Revelation. Which books deal with the present? All the books in the middle, where we find teaching on how we should live our lives as Christians. Remember what God has done in the past. Claim the promises of God for your present situation. And then be committed to go through your situation by faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith, no one can please God. And I want to close with the way Eugene Peterson paraphrases Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, um, which deal with the fruit of the Spirit. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Let's pray. We praise you, Father God, this morning for all that you have done for us in the past, how you've come through for us, how you've shown your faithfulness. And we thank you for the promises we find in your word. You will never leave us. You will guide us. You will provide for us and many more. Help us to know your word and to live by faith today. In Jesus' name, amen.